Okay, in this video, we're going to look at the following differential equation, y prime equals y, but we're going to solve it with a series solution. And so this gives us a good opportunity to practice finding series solutions for differential equations for differential equations that we know the solution to already. So we know that the solution to this by maybe the first day of differential equ equations class would be y equals some constant times e to the x. And you can get this by guessing the solution, guessing and checking, um, using the fact that you know the derivative of e to the x is itself. You can use this by separation of variables. Um, you can do this with a number of methods. So the method that we're going to do here is using a series solution, which is a bit overkill, but it's good practice for finding series solutions to differential equations. So let's see how we start. So we start by setting y equal to the sum n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n x to the n. So we're taking a series solution based around x equals 0. So we've got this power series based at x equals 0. Okay, good. And then from here, we can do term by term differentiation on y. So that'll give us y prime equals, so that's the sum, n equals 0 to infinity, and then we can use the power rule here, so that'll give us n, a n, x to the n, minus 1. Okay, good. And then the next thing to notice is that uh, this n equals 0 term doesn't really matter, so we can set this as the sum n equals 1 to infinity of n a n x to the n minus 1, and that's because we have this multiple of 0 here. Okay, good. So now from here, we can uh, set our differential equation with this value of y prime and this value of y. So in other words, if this is a solution to this differential equation, then that gives us the equality of these two power series. So we have the sum n equals 1 to infinity of n a sub n x to the n minus 1 equals the sum n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n x to the n. Okay, so now uh, we're actually moving along pretty well, but what we need is we need to set these power series so they have the same, uh, they're indexed in a way so that they look the same so that the exponent on x is the same in each one. So that means we need to re-index this power series. So what we want to do is we'll replace n with um, n plus 1 in this case. And so let's write that out. So in this power series, we'll make the replacement. So we'll replace n uh, with n plus 1. And so notice that will have the effect uh, as follows. So that means we, instead of starting from um, 1 to infinity, we're going to start from 0 to infinity. Good. And then we have n plus 1 here. Good. And then we have a sub n plus 1 here. And then finally, we have x to the n here. So those are all those effects. So if we're replacing n with n plus 1, then that means n minus 1 gets replaced with n. And so let's notice that as well. So n minus 1 gets replaced with n. Okay, good. So now I'll bring this down. And so that gives us the following. The sum n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n x to the n. Great. And now what we can do is equate coefficients on each side. So we'll equate coefficients of x to the n on both sides, and that will give us the following equation, n plus 1 times a to the n plus 1 equals a sub n. Um, okay, good. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll start from this point and go towards the final solution. 
Okay, so far we've determined the following recursion on these coefficients. So we have n plus 1 times a sub n plus 1 is a sub n. But we can rewrite that as a sub n plus 1 is 1 over n plus 1 times a sub n. So now what we want to do is do just a little bit of exploration in order to get a feel for what these coefficients are. So notice if we have a sub 0, there's nothing we can do because there's nothing previous to a sub 0 to uh, write this in terms of. And then we have a sub 1 is equal to, so let's see, this is 1 over 1 a sub 0. So this is um, a sub 0 itself. Great. Then the next thing we can do is a sub 2. So following this recursion, that's 1 over 2 a sub 1. So 1 over 2 a sub 1, which is 1 over 2 a sub 0. Okay, great. And now a sub 3, so that'll be 1 over 3 a sub 2. So 1 over 3 a sub 2. But we know what a sub 2 is. It's 1 half a 0. So we get this is 1 over 3 times 2 times a sub 0. And so now it's kind of coming together. Let's do uh, one more. So let's see, a sub 4 is 1 over 4 a sub 3, which is going to be 1 over 4 times 3 times 2 a sub 0. So I think maybe we have a claim, and that claim looks like the following. So we could have this claim which is a sub n equals, so let's see what we have. a sub 4 is 1 over 4 times 3 times 2, but that's 1 over 4 factorial times a naught. a sub 3 is 1 over 3 times 2, so that's 1 over 3 factorial a naught. There's 2 factorial, there's 1 factorial. So we could say that this is, looks like it's 1 over n factorial times a sub 0. <clears throat> okay, good. Now, uh, kind of depending on the course you're in, you may want to prove this a couple of different ways. Like, for example, this may be enough, but uh, we could also maybe prove this using induction. So uh, let's do that just to be safe. So proof, we'll do this with induction. So we could have a base case. And notice that a sub 0 equals 1 over 0 factorial times a sub 0. And that's just recalling, by definition, 0 factorial is 1. And so the base case is OK. And then our induction hypothesis, we will assume that a sub k equals 1 over k factorial a sub 0. And then uh, notice that a sub k plus 1 is 1 over k plus 1 times a sub k by the defining recursion, which is equal to 1 over k plus 1 times 1 over k factorial times a 0, again, by the induction hypothesis, but that's exactly equal to 1 over k plus 1 factorial times a sub 0. Good. And so that establishes this formula. So I'll clean it up and then we'll write a summary. Okay, so 
So let's look at the summary. So if we have this power series, this arbitrary looking power series, a sub n, x to the n, and if we know that it satisfies this first order differential equation, y prime equals y, then we know the coefficients are defined as follows. So the nth term is one over n factorial, the zeroth term. So that means the zeroth term is really our only degree of freedom. So let's see what that tells us. That tells us that y equals the sum, n equals zero to infinity of, and now I'm going to rewrite this in a slightly different order, a zero, one over n factorial x to the n, which is equal to a zero, the sum, n equals zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. But now we've arrived at the well-known power series representation of e to the x, so this is equal to a sub zero e to the x. And so we've arrived at the same solution that we did maybe like on the first day of such a class or using a separation of variables or something. Okay, so we're finished.